Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goodykantz, Superintendent of Schools. Joining me today are three of Needham's new administrators who are here to talk about some of the leadership challenges they face in their schools and program. I want to welcome Mary Lammy, our Interim Director of Student Support Services. Welcome, Mary. Thank you. Rod McNeil, our uh, Principal at Elliott in his second year, so he's still new in Needham. Welcome Absolutely. to you, Rod. Still learning. And uh, Tamitha Bibbar, our new Principal at Pollard. Welcome to you, Tamitha. Thank you, Dan. Thanks all of you for, for joining me. And, and I thought we, we would talk for a little bit about your role in Needham and maybe some of the challenges and opportunities you're facing. Mary, I think I want to begin with you because your title, when I say principal, people immediately identify with that role. But you are the district's director of student support services. So what do you do? What don't I do, I think is the better question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, it's a district-wide position. Um, a lot of what I do is about supporting students. So um, I oversee special education. I oversee the guidance department, our METCO program, nursing. Um, I assist with um, student registration. Um, I'm the contact for families that choose to homeschool. Um, I'm the homeless liaison. So anything that has to do with the supports and services that allow all of our students to access a quality education falls under my purview. So I'm going to drill into one thing for a second because uh, you have a huge uh, portfolio. Special education is, is a key one. But you just said something, and maybe just so our, our audience understands, homeless students. Mm -hmm. There are homeless students in Needham? They sure are. What they does sure it, are. Tell us a little well, bit about that. Well, it's interesting, Dan, because um, an article came out in the Globe a couple of weeks ab ago in regards to Massachusetts and the rise in homeless families um, in our state. And we certainly have experienced that here in Needham. Um, I started the position in, in July, as you know. And one of the surprising pieces for me, and I at first thought it was because of my newness to the position, but then quickly learned this is new for us in Needham. We had easily <coughs> 10 families enter um, the district that are considered homeless. Um, and that is new to us. There, some have left um, and some still have remained. Um, so really having us understand how to connect families with the right resources, what our responsibilities are to support these families um, has been um, a quick learning process for me, but it's also been a learning process for um, the administrators and, and well, across the district and, and, and for our the teaching community staff as well, the community. because it's a, it's, a, it's a new thing for families for whom we, and students for whom we have responsibility. I want to uh, get back to you in a moment about your, uh, what, what your, your interest was in this huge leadership <laughs> role that you just described. Sure. Uh, before I do that, uh, Ron, you are now in your second year in Needham. Yes. Uh, so what's your background and how did you get here? Well, my background is elementary education. Um, I started out um, as a teacher, uh, teaching kindergarten, preschool, kindergarten, uh, second, third, and fourth grade. Uh, and I got the opportunity to become an assistant principal uh, back in Michigan. I'm from Michigan. Go Wolverines. Go Blue. Um, so from there, I pretty much have spent the majority of my uh, career in, um, as an administrator. But I, ha I received the opportunity to apply outside of Michigan. And of course, Needham struck my eye. I looked at the posting and many of the descriptive words about the position and about the community was something I was looking for. And then, of course, uh, my conversations with you and Tom Campbell uh, just, you know, uh, supported my interest. And uh, once, I, once I came in and I interviewed and I saw the town and I saw the, the area, I was even more uh, curious. And then as the interview process, you know, progressed, I got a chance to visit Elliot and uh, meet the, the teachers, the staff, and the parents. And, you know, it just seemed like a very good fit. Uh, the things that they were talking about, the vision that they had for their school uh, seemed to match my skill set. And so it, it was a good match, and I'm glad I took the position. Well, we're, we're glad that you did that as well. <laughs> so uh, we're glad you're here. And, and we're also glad that, that Tamitha, you're, you're, uh, you're back home, if you will. Uh, back home uh, at, at, in Needham. So tell us about that journey in, 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 in Pollard. Sure. So my background, as you know, Dan, um, I was in uh, Needham for a number of years at the high school as the assistant principal. Uh, prior to that, I was a high school English teacher for a number of years, for about nine years, and went into administration. And loved Needham when I came here back in 2008 and truly thought I would 
live my whole career here and not leave. Uh, but my family was presented with an opportunity to move to London in the UK, and so I was able to work there at the American School in London, which is an interesting um, school and really a wonderful learning experience for me personally and professionally. Uh, it's an um, international school, but with an American curriculum. Um, and so I was fortunate that we were coming back to the area and Pollard, the timing couldn't have been better, that the position opened up at the same time that we were returning to the Boston area and it was the job, the position, the town, the community I wanted to be in. So I'm really happy to be back. Well, we're again, uh, I'm uh, thrilled that all three of you are uh, <laughs> new leaders in Needham in, in so many ways. And just for a moment, uh, primarily for you, Tamith and Rod, the hiring process, uh, what's, what's a piece of it that you recall? Because Needham spends a lot of time uh, thinking about uh, recruiting, vetting, and, and uh, wooing potential leaders to, to come to Needham. What's, what's something you recall from the hiring process, Rod, that uh, uh, was, was both, both, both exciting, perhaps, and maybe a little daunting? Well, first of all, the, the thoroughness and the, the way that you do go through the vetting process is attractive to someone looking for a position because you see that the detail the attention to detail is there, and so you know that going into that school district or that position that you, you assume that that's going to be the way that they conduct business, and that's, that's you want to be a part of an organization that, that is that thorough. And the one thing that really stood out to me that I had never experienced before was when you and Tom came to visit the school. Tom Campbell, the Director of Human Tom, Resources. Oh, right. you know, Tom Campbell, the Director of Human Resources, came and visited the school at which I was the principal in West Bloomfield. And I had never gone through something like that, and I was glad that you did that because I put a lot of hard work on, over the three years where I was principal, and I got to show it off. So I think that was, gave me an opportunity to, to kind of you have the interview, the initial interview, you can kind of describe what you did and, and your talent and, and the things that you're interested in and your skill set, but to have someone to come actually see it in action the way that it was implemented, I think that adds not only to your knowledge base for, for the, you know, the potential candidate, but it also gives me an opportunity to show off and exemplify all the things that I talked about in the interview. Well, and of course, I, I think we also got to, you know, really check in to see if some of these things, if you were actually, you know, walking the walk. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and we learned that that was the case. And, and, uh, and during these interview processes, we, we spend time away from the candidate and ask some hard questions of folks mm -hmm. that they may not be expecting. And we sure. get a chance to wander around the corners, look underneath the, uh, uh, the carpet a little bit to, right. to see mm -hmm. what we can learn. And, and it's uh, incredibly helpful. Uh, Tamitha, uh, you had a similar process, although we did yes. not travel to <laughs> London to see you. We, we did a virtual tour. Virtually, virtually we did a virtual tour. Yeah. Um, I would say, Dan, I, I agree with what Rod said and the, and the thoroughness and the feeling that this is serious and that you're taking it incredibly seriously and investing the time and the energy to meet myself, to get to know who, who I am and what I stand for, but also the opportunity to come to the community for the day. So Rod elaborated on your visit to us, which I, I concur. I think it's always a really nice opportunity for you to see us in action and to ask questions mm -hmm. unstaged of anybody that you'd like to in the building. And so you did that virtually in London, but when I was coming here for the first time, there was a visit to Franklin High School and that experience also um, is an, a, you know, an example of, I think, the thoroughness. But what I enjoyed is that the process gives, it's a multi-layered stepping process where you have a number of interviews and an opportunity to visit Needham. And so you're able to know that this is the right fit. Mm -hmm. Over the time, you're able to connect with people from the community, in the buildings, parents, uh, you know, students, and you're able to realize that this is the right fit for you, that the philosophy is, is where you want to um, connect and where you want to continue to grow and to learn. And so I, I really appreciated that mm -hmm. uh, process and the ability to come to Needham for the day, spend time to get into the community and to get to meet some folks. Well, it, it's, it's incredibly important and, and I think the same rigor and attention we, we, that I spend and, and, and Tom Campbell on, on leadership positions, we, we, we do the same thing for teaching positions because yes. we personnel after student safety is job one. Sure. Uh, you have to get it right and uh, so we spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, so, Mary, in, in your role, 
uh, you've actually had a couple roles in the Needham Public I Schools, uh, coming into the preschool and then our director of uh, um, elementary special education, mm -hmm. and now this district-wide role, uh, director of student support services. What so? What have you learned about the Needham community in your experience? You came from Shrewsbury mm -hmm. before, where you were right. preschool director, and right. and. Uh, but what, what, is, what is it about Needham that, that you're wrapping your hands around and you're learning about and um, excited about? Also some challenges with that. I, you know, from the first month, um, and so I started back in 2009, and really right, right away you could just sense the level of support from the community that wasn't necessarily the case in my past experiences. And that really took me by surprise coming in and still takes me off guard um, from time to time because, you know, sometimes we are we have needs and there's there's price tags attached to those needs and those can be challenging conversations. Um, and we want to be sure. I want to be sure that I'm 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 being sound as far as recommendations I'm making that are both um, programmatically a good thing as well as um, fiscally responsible. And so. You know, when you're engaging in those kind of conversations, to feel the support from the community and to hear the community say, this is something that we want to see happen too. We just need to figure out how we can do that. That, that and I, I hear time and time again from other um, administrators and teaching staff that I work with, it's the same thing. It's, you know, the work is hard. Um, you put a lot of hours and dedication into what you do, whether you have a teaching position or an administrative position or whatever it might be. So to do that in a community that is welcoming, that wants good things for kids, that is supportive to the school system, that's been probably the, the primary piece. One of the things you're saying is that the, the, the community is very supportive and, and insinuation is as well. There are high expectations in sure. the community. And, and there's a high degree of accountability, I think, uh, and a request for transparency, which I think is yep. a very good thing. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a challenge to, to make that happen. Uh, Rod, so what, what uh, I mean, both of you are, are, are in a, you know, different uh, uh, parts of your career. You're into, you're into year two, and you're just, you're well into year one. I, into year two, what have you learned about the Needham community? What strikes you as, as something that uh, a year ago you'd say uh, you weren't sure of, or you were just beginning to, to uh, feel out and, 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 and learn? Well, one thing I can echo Mary's sentiments about the, the amount of uh, dedication that the community uh, shows, exhibits, tours to schools. Um, the parents at Elliott particularly are very vested in not only the success of their individual child, but in all the children that attend Elliott. Um, I think one thing coming in is you have all these things that you want to do, and probably the, the hardest thing about coming into a new school is slowing down, mm -hmm. getting to know everybody, getting to know what the what the needs are first. Uh, this is something that I've learned after the first year, uh, that you gotta slow down, recalibrate uh, your pace, find out what the needs are, and then you can kind of put together your vision. Because when you come in, everybody wants to know, well, what do you wanna do? What's your vision? Yeah. You know, where do you see us in yeah. five years? What are you gonna fix? What are you gonna <laughs> fix, exactly, yeah. you know? Yeah. And not that there was a lot of things to fix, because right. my predecessor did a great job. But just, you know, you have your own way of doing things and you have your own way of, of approaching certain situations and, and challenges. And so I think that it's important, what well, I've learned throughout this year, or my first year, and I'm implementing this year, is that, you know, you gotta get to know the staff, you gotta, you gotta get to know what their strengths and their, and their areas that they would like to work on and from their perspective and also from the perspective of the parents. And, and finally, not finally, but, you know, from the perspective of students, what they need. And so you have to kind of recalibrate your pace and kind of slow it down to go fast, you know, slow down to go fast, that whole model. So that's one thing that I've been working on, trying to get more feedback from the community, uh, from the teachers, and implementing that, I mean, and, and incorporating that in the things that I would like to do and, and, and incorporating with my perspective. And so taking all of that and trying to move everyone forward to a common goal. So that, that, that has been the a learning process, but it's also been, um, I, I, I enjoy doing it because you get to engage different uh, aspects of the learning community. And I think that that is something that's helpful for everyone because they not only see your perspective, but they see the perspective of the parents and the staff. And so everybody can, can, can work together towards a common goal. One of the things, Tamitha, I was talking about is pacing. 
and, and kind of setting a pace. You know, you come in, you have all these experiences, you have these perspectives, perhaps a different state or a different country, mm -hmm. and, and you know what you know and you want to share and you want to be able to do. Uh, but then you get into a situation, uh, a new role, and you, you have to, you got to pace yourself. Uh, so what, what's the pacing been like for you? What, what are some of the learnings that you've taken uh, so far? And so, it, you know, it, it is one of those difficult decisions <laughs> right. of, you know, what is too fast, too soon? Mm -hmm. So I think um, I feel like I'm in a fortunate position where I've been in Needham before. Mm -hmm. Although I've been at the high school and so I understand the community and the high expectations and I knew that piece and it's the reason that it pulled me back. You know, not only is there commitment to the students to grow and learn, but to the parents. You know, we just had the parenting conference this past weekend. It was a wonderful conference. I y yes, and, um, and it, it was booked solid and for weeks out, and it was wonderful. And to see the commitment of the adults wanting to grow and learn. Um, and so when we think about the pacing question, and I, I think about, um, you know, coming back in, there is a lot for me to learn. Because although not new to Needham, I am new to the Pollard community. And so I've been having open houses. I'm, I've made a commitment to myself to just try to do a lot of listening and not make a lot of decisions. Mm -hmm. And to say to folks, I hear you, I understand what you're saying, I'm gonna take that down. Uh, I'd like to do somewhat of a 100 day, you know, state of the school speech, you know, in January at some point to say this is what I'm hearing. We come back and we could broadcast. Mm -hmm. Sure. All of that. <laughs> you know, and sitting, you know, taking time to be in classrooms every single day, to sit at lunch with students and to ask them some thoughtful questions about their school experience, to go to as many, as many community events as I can, to ha just be available for parents to give feedback. So right now, I feel like I'm in the gathering stage. I'm trying to, to better understand, to make a long-term plan that's going to be effective and thoughtful and proactive rather than reactive. So, you know, it's a hard thing to do though, knowing how fast-paced our community is and the students are. Well, so. and, and knowing, as, I, as I've come to learn about the three of you, the, 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 the talents that you have, the wisdom and experiences you have, you wanna make you know, things happen. <laughs> I mean, the good thing is, that's the balance in the, in the calibration you're talking about. There are parents and staff who wanna make things happen too. Sure. Mm -hmm. And they also have some really you know, wonderful ideas and, and, and initiatives and it's, Trying to balance all those and mm -hmm. and and uh, and figure out what's the what's the sweet spot where we can we can exactly. move forward without mowing people over. Mm -hmm. It's a right. it's a challenge of leadership. I, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the challenges and opportunities in, in each of your in each of your schools and both your schools and your and your program area. Uh, there are a lot of things going on in the town of Needham. There are a lot of things going on in education. Uh, if we have if we have an opportunity uh, in our conversation today, we can talk about some of those things that are you know, uh, part of the the, uh, the landscape of education in Massachusetts um, and how they're affecting our schools. But right now, you know, you're seeing some things, Tamitha, at, at Pollard. Rod, you've seen some things. And Mary, and as a district uh, level, you, you're seeing, you know, different opportunities and challenges. Tamitha, what, what right now do you, are you seeing are some challenges ahead, uh, some opportunities ahead for the Pollard community that you're interested to learn more about? Sure. So, you know, I think right now as we look at the Pollard community, it's the balance of academic rigor with also providing the social, emotional, and character development of each and every student. So I think, you know, a challenge that we face, and it's not necessarily a challenge, it's also an opportunity, is that we today have 858 students at Pollard, you know, in grades seven and eight. And so how do we personalize and individualize to be able to uh, challenge each and every student appropriately? And so we're thinking about that. We're looking at our schedule to say, are we using every minute of every day for students to learn and to grow? Recognizing that metacognition is incredibly important and time for reflection and even time for our students to be up and moving, you know, and to, to use that, um, that part of their brains as they're, as they're growing and as they're maturing. So I think um, like every middle school, we're just trying to find ways to connect with kids on a really personal level to develop the intellect and character um, in every opportunity that we can. And to be reactive to the news, what's going on right now, what's in their world, but also to plan long term so that we can have them ready for high school so that they're confident and, and happy and assured that they can do and, and be the best that they can be in that environment. 
So um, one of the things, again, that as you're talking that comes up are our uh, expectations, and I know that you talk about the schedule at Pollard. That's something that you want to learn more about, is that folks have been, been talking about that. We just added a little bit of time to the middle school day this year. We did. Um, and, and Rod, we've added even more time at the elementary level. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what, uh, what are some of the, the challenges and, and opportunities you see either with the schedule or just what you're seeing at Elliott right now uh, or that your colleagues in the other elementary schools are seeing that, that you want to learn more about and you want to influence? Well, I think uh, with the new schedule, it brought the collaboration time, so uh, which kind of, I think, coincides perfectly with the new units of study uh, for Reader's Workshop and the, the adjustments that were made to the math curriculum so it's more aligned with the Common Core. So that's giving teachers an opportunity to meet with the math coaches, the literacy coaches, in order to hash out, you know, what does that look like? You know, what is, what, how does that impact my uh, daily lesson plan? Um, and the, the various opportunities that are in there to have individualized uh, instruction and to differentiate, you know, based on the needs of the student. So I think right now we're trying to find out how to best um, take the collaboration time and, and make it work for everybody. Um, with anything new, it's going to bring challenges. So, you know, this year we have the, like I said, the new changes to the uh, the reading curriculum, the math curriculum, plus the changes to the schedule. So right now we're trying to deal with all that and 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 look at how it's impacting right. our daily so life. So there's a lot going on it's for our elementary on. teachers, Absolutely. most certainly. A lot going on, a lot of moving mm -hmm. parts and, and, and programming, and new programming for students that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, STEAM programming <coughs> Steam. and, and uh, yes. uh, more wellness uh, programming and opportunity mm -hmm. for movement uh, for students, which we all believe is important and research suggests it is right. so. Spanish. Uh, Spanish language. has been implemented at the beginning in grade one. So it, I mean, it is very exciting, and uh, I think you, you hit upon the, the challenge and the opportunity that this collaboration time, and again, hitting our stride, hitting our pace, both at the uh, middle school level, the high school level, and the elementary mm -hmm. level is, is key. Uh, Mary, you began by kind of ticking off all these programs you have responsibility for. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. So, uh, and you're in a new role. What, what are some of the challenges and, and uh, the opportunities that you see in, in your new role as you look ahead? Um, hmm, I hope this doesn't sound uh, corny, but I see nothing but opportunity. I mean, I really challenges to me present opportunity. There's always something you can get from a difficult conversation or a difficult situation. And so, um, you know, again, being in the right um, community, in the right district that has a really solid belief system around um, what we feel we can do and what our students can do, it, it's really... Um, I, f I consider myself pretty fortunate. Um, I, the work is never done. You know that that's <laughs> sort of the exciting part <laughs> and the exhausting yes, I, I part. Um, that's, that's, absolutely. Yep, yes. um, so you know it, when you you have that self drive and then you're you're surrounded by folks that share that. You know you're always looking for what can we do better? What could we do, we be doing differently? And that comes from a I think a core um, desire to want to be sure that. Um, every student that we have in the Needham Public Schools or in our community is having equal access to a high quality education. So I think one of the, the um, biggest challenges that I've seen in the, over the last few months now being district wide is um, the amount of families that are moving into Needham already on top of, you know, a, a, um, a baseline of having students with very different needs and very different backgrounds, but we've had a real influx of students with significant special needs move into the district. I think my count is at 12 since July. Um, we have um, a new group home, as you know, um, in Needham, and we currently have seven students from the group home in our district. Yeah, and we have to provide resources <coughs> for all of these children. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mentioned the homeless um, families that we have, um, families moving in that um, where English is not their primary language. So, you know, the landscape for us, the students for us have, has been changing. And then the landscape for us has also been changing. Technology is pushing us forward. Um, our curriculum, our expectations is pushing us forward. So it's this interesting concoction <laughs> of who we are as a community with what is going on in, in the world and how do we ready ourselves and our students um, for the world that we that we live in so it, it, those are 
those are uh, very large challenges that you know you you plan you plan a program you plan a budget and uh, you say this is where this is what we will be these are the resources we need and then you find out that some kiddos with some very significant needs mm -hmm. uh, move in and we have to be responsive we can't mm -hmm. say well can you hold off for a year and we'll deal with you then uh, we, we have to be responsive at that time and we have to be flexible enough and nimble enough to, to uh, be responsive. That certainly is a leadership challenge, just being able to do that. It isn't just a ma matter of being a manager of a budget or a manager of a program. How can you exert some leadership to think differently or creative, creatively right. about a child or, mm -hmm. or, or school or program to, to be responsive to those needs? That, that is something that uh, I know we spend, all, all of you, we, we all do spend some time wrapping our, our, our heads around. You know, you said something, Mary, and I, I wouldn't, I'd like to hear from, from all of you um, with the, the short amount of time we have. Uh, you said something about learning for all students, um, or maybe I'm making that leap there, but it is certainly something I've heard a lot about lately in Needham. It's not just about some or a few or many. It's about learning, or most, it's about learning for all students. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I think it's giving everyone an equal chance um, to have access to the, to the general education curriculum that we work on. So um, just giving all kids access. And you have to be able to address the individual needs to make sure that, he, that they do have equal access. And it has to also be towards it, you know, they have the access to a challenging curriculum. And that's something that we work on every day. Uh, the teachers, the, the one thing that's good about the challenges that we're not doing it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think in the, in the Needham community, I know you'll see, and I know you found to be mm -hmm. uh, something that's certain, that everybody's willing to work hard. And they're willing to work hard and they're passionate about it. And, mm -hmm. and one thing I, I, I like to highlight is that the teachers work hard every day mm -hmm. to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Not that what they're supposed to be doing, but they're doing what they know is right. And they're not afraid to take risk. They're not t afraid to, to meet those challenges. And they're not afraid to work with you in order to meet those challenges. So it's not like even though we have administrative positions, we're doing it alone. I think that's a great point. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you've art articulated having access for students. I, what, learning for all, what is it? What does it, what does uh, you it mean know, when to you? I think about learning for all students, I, I think it's access, but I also think it's not just the access, it's a, allowing students to grow mm -hmm. where they are from the start point to an end point. So I think about some students need more challenge and need to be stretched and need to be looking at their curriculum in a different way. And some students need the pace to slow down a little mm -hmm. bit so that they can really delve in deep into what they're learning. And so when I think about all students, our students are all on a different spectrum and teachers are incredibly fa you know, facile at looking at different students and saying, what does this child need? Mm -hmm. How can I help personalize this? I know in the district, and I know at Pollard in particular, our teachers are here early, they're here late, they're trying to personalize and individualize, but they're also making sure that by June, by the time the year ends, that all students have gotten the skills and the knowledge and the content that they need to be successful as they move forward. Regardless if they've had you as a teacher or you as a teacher, you know, and, and they're able to stretch kids where appropriately. Um, and so that's when I think about, student, you know, access for all or education for all. Well, I, it's, it's pretty amazing what you've articulated and I know we, we all want to echo the comments about our staff being incredibly hardworking and uh, very thoughtful uh, and diligent and attentive to, to learning for all children. You know, this, this business of leadership and school leadership can be very serious business, but I also understand that as principal of Elliott, sometimes you get to get a little silly and, and uh, play basketball between Hillside and Elliott, and yes. you're out there on the court. Is that a true yeah, statement? Yeah, that's a true statement. And I, and I think recently there was some lip syncing <laughs> going on at Pollard with the principal. There, there what was. was. The, what was the song that you... Uh, oh, you uh, there, were, there were three songs, but, but um, the last one, I think, which was fun was Jennifer Hudson's um, uh, and uh, the song she sang in Dream Girls. I okay. can't recall the name of it. Well, but, but make you love me. The, yes, I'm gonna make you love me. Okay. Yes. Well, I see in there and and it's the eighth and grade talent show. The eighth grade talent show. So that, that's the other part. That's the other part of uh, school leadership is uh, 
is being involved in that way. Well, there's no question from this conversation that uh, we, we spend time, and the community should know this, we spend time recruiting great leaders for our schools and, and vetting those leaders so that we have the right people leading our schools. There's also no question that parents are invested, the staff is invested in learning. The challenges include collaboration, school improvement, and making sure that every child has an opportunity to learn and to grow and to excel in Needham. Thanks to uh, Tamitha and Rod and Mary for your good work, and thanks for joining me today. Thank you for Thank having me. Thanks, folks.